Welcome to Dental Vibes. I'm Gabby. And I'm Carla. And if you're new here, we have been dental assistants for over a decade and we share passion for dentistry. In this channel, you will find content for dental assistants and for anybody that wants to take care of their oral health. So if you like teeth, make sure to subscribe to our channel. And if you're returning back to our channel, thank you so much for your support. Please continue to support us. As always, leave us a comment and like this video. And today's topic is about foreign models. Video, we're gonna talk about pouring models but specifically for bleaching traits mm -hmm. because if you're gonna pour models for like study models yeah. that's a little bit different or partials or dentures that's gonna be a whole different story yeah. we're gonna specifically talk about ble uh, for models for bleaching traits because you can kind of slack off on that a little bit <laughs> And on a good note, we're not gonna be trimming models in this video yes. <laughs> uh, because it's a little messy. The lab is really small, and you know, we're just making do with what we got. <laughs> Gabby and I have a little disclaimer about this video because we set out to make a fun but also kind of like a how-to video on how to pour models based on our tips and tricks that we have learned throughout our many years of experience. However, as you're going to watch, it turned out to be a huge disaster. However, it's also good to see what went wrong because we learn best from our mistakes and here at dental vibes that's what we're all about we try to keep it real because it happens even to the best of us on a good day and actually we were that day running a little bit late and it was the last video we were shooting we were tired the lab we were working at was really small so it kind of relates to a daily life where if you're running behind or you really rush at work so it's good to know like what mistakes to avoid when poor models or if you do have a bad model how to fix it how to troubleshoot so we are gonna make a great video on how to properly pour models and make them come out looking perfect so make sure you watch out for that and we're also gonna make a video on how to make a bleaching trace or whitening trace on these bad models so that we can show you how to troubleshoot in case this ever happens to you all right guys, so we're gonna just get going and we're gonna start pouring some models. By the way, in this, I do eyeball it. I know that there's probably instructions. Uh, we talked about it in our mixing alginate, taking alginate impressions video, but here I do like for two. We'll see what Gabby tells us, but about this much. Consistency is key also when you're mixing the stone. See what I just did? This is a... <laughs> okay, that's okay. See what I just did? This is a no-no. That's like way, way runny. I got distracted because I was talking. Let me see. Let's add some more. I need to refill the stone here. By the way, if you're mixing, we're, we're doing this um, trays with um, Yellowstone. I know people like to do bleaching trays with white stone. We just selected one. I feel like it could be a little bit more, but I'm going to be fine uh, with this. And then I'll do the base a little bit thicker. So here we go. You kind of just do it a little bit slower. I used to be really bad at pouring models because I would get a lot of air bubbles. I know that there's a spray, uh, I think it's called a debobulizer. <laughs> is it called that? I don't know. Which is fine, but I'm like, no, I need to learn because I see other people that were just fine. And then also I noticed if the impression material is wet, I would dry it and I would get a little bit of, um, you know, that way the stone isn't mixing with water and creating more bubbles. I hope this comes out good for the video. <laughs> like it'll be that one time that it comes out with the bubble. I'm actually gonna use what I have left runny and I'll start doing the lower one. That way I don't have to create two bases. But I wanted to say that 
especially for the top one. I never really think about like, oh, do I trim the model after, you know, to create the bleaching trays? So once it's set, I trim. Like, I guess I just do it if I need to. Um, but Gabby's going to show us like a little trick because I actually, I mean, I don't know what else to do. I never really thought about it. I feel like the lower one it's really easy to get air bubbles in the interior area because if you don't go slow enough and now I'm kind of like doubting myself you miss you know it doesn't go all the way down to the incisal edges Ooh. we gotta act quick girl. Ooh. it's setting now we're fine Yeah, see, I don't do a big base like that for bleaching trays. Okay, guys, so Carla showed you guys the way she does it, and I think it's pretty interesting how she does like a U shape and she doesn't build a palette. So this way, you most likely won't have to trim the models anyway. I personally want to make sure I'm not going to need to trim that model just because that's an extra step, step you don't have to do for a bleaching tray. So I'm going to go ahead and not even make a base really. So, just going to pour and make sure we don't have any bubbles here and obviously make sure it's not too runny. So you see how I'm not even making a base, I'm just kind of covering the teeth so I don't want it on the alginate at all so similar than Carla right I want to go like this and then I'm going to actually flip it when you flip it this is the lower arch so you're gonna see this here you're gonna go ahead with your finger and you're gonna flatten this because you don't want this part to be sticking up and it might be in a way of your bleaching tray. So you're just gonna come with your fingers here. And just make sure there's nothing. You see how here there's not a bunch of extra alginate. Uh, I mean not alginate. Um, hmm. Stone. <laughs> there's not a bunch of extra. It's just like super. And here, actually, I would add a little bit just to make it more symmetrical. Just like that. Thank you. Okay, so we're gonna separate the models. This is the upper one. So you see there are some bubbles here, which for a bleaching tray is fine, you know, you could just kind of, you can carve it out. Carve it out. It's any any a, bubbles? A I mean, not the voids? So oh, there's right a there. tiny void there, but again, for a bleaching tray is fine. You're going to see the uh, wisdom tooth here. For a bleaching tray is completely fine. If it was for a night guard or a retainer, then that would be a problem. But, you know, that's, that's okay. We can, you know, cut that off. No big deal. See the lower. So this is a lower one. The reason why I make that thicker base is because I find it easier for me to grab <laughs> and separate it. Here where I try to fix it, right? So over here is fine. Now we have a big, bubble, a big here bubble and a big bubble here. What I say about pouring it slowly in the interiors, that's where it gets you. So um I think that this is not going to be a big issue that I could just fill it in with some liquid dam here. So stay tuned for our um, video on how to make bleaching trays. I'm going to be using this one. So I'm going to show you guys how you can fix this. Now we're going to compare the difference. So this is 
how Carla does her base, which I think it looks good. I mean, you really don't have to trim this. I mean, this you can kind of flake off. Like you sometimes, don't have to trim it. What I have to say is compared to yours is that sometimes I would have to probably trim a little bit on the side and the like the bad. base just to make it flat. Yeah, this is not bad. It, it's not bad, right? But I see what you mean about if you really want to avoid having to trim. Yeah. For bleaching trays, I mean. Yeah, see so, that's flat so like you're flat. flat but i'll be scared to pull it out <laughs> because it's so thin mm -hmm. doing great don't be scared there it is now i don't it's that guy you gotta yeah, i you don't know it. why i have this bubble in this bubble <laughs> but you know i think overall it's fine you know again for bleaching trays we can kind of slack off a little right. bit. Like this could be filled in. You know, this yeah. could be filled in. That's not a big deal. Yeah. But you see how nothing here is going to get stuck mm -hmm. and, and be in the way of the bleaching tray. So yeah. even though it looks kind of messy and crazy, it's not a pretty model, right? We right, don't have to right. present this to anybody. No, we're speaking truth here. Yeah. We don't have to present this to a patient, so it doesn't have to be pretty. It just have to be functional. Right. So. That way, you're not gonna get stuck anywhere and you don't have to trim. Yeah. So all you have to do is really be mindful that you don't need all this extra stone everywhere. So then you don't have to trim. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned for our following video that we'll do about making the actual bleaching trays on these models. We hope you found this video helpful. If you put models in a similar way that we do, please let us know in the comment below. Or if you have a different tip, also let us know and we want to see your models on instagram so make sure you tag us and you can follow us on tiktok and facebook as well also check out our video on algina impressions we'll leave it under the mm -hmm. description keep showing us support like this video subscribe to our channel if you're new here share this video with your dental peeps and we will see you guys next time keep, keep smiling, smiling.